when I was in elementary school, my mother and I lived in a very small duplex in a very low-income neighborhood. When I was a child, looking at my neighborhood through my childhood eyes, I referred to it as a big dog neighborhood. Why? Because as I saw it, all the dogs that lived in our low-income neighborhood, they were big. And not only were they big, they were usually mean. And then I would go spend time with my friends whose family had more money than my family had. And it seemed like the more money a family had, the smaller their dog got. <laughs> There's some truth to this, isn't there? Yeah. And, and, but, but even if the dog wasn't smaller, the dog almost always was nicer. Now, in the middle of my big dog neighborhood, there was an empty, vacant lot. In fact, it was right across the street from my house. And it was kind of our sandlot, our field of dreams. And and as a young boy, my friends and I, we would gather there for pickup football games. And as you can imagine, pickup football games in a big dog neighborhood, they can be pretty violent. I, I had fun. I enjoyed that, but I also have to let you know that as I was preparing to go out into the field of dreams in a sometimes rough big dog neighborhood, I'd have to get myself psyched up. And so I would stand in front of the doorway, and I'd wait, and it never went first because I had to make an entrance. I would wait until until my friends would start to gather in the field across the street from our home. And as I waited, I would imagine. And my imagining would take me into the tunnel of Texas Stadium. Amen. Preach. And I would be surrounded by Dallas Cowboys. Tom Landry at the front. And I could hear the crowd in my mind getting riled up and and cheering as we prepared to go out and vanquish our foes to make all that is right in the world happen on the field of play. And I could hear the announcer calling out those names. Ed Tutal Jones, Harvey Martin, Tony Dorsett, Drew Pearson, Robert Newhouse, Roger Staubach, And Brian Gerard, crowd would go crazy. Ah. And right when right when that moment hit, right, I'd take that football and I'd fling open that spring door, that that screen door, and I'd run about, I don't know, about the distance from here to that door, and I'd stop and I'd look both ways. (laughs) Because the cars tend to drive faster through big dog neighborhoods. And and then I would run across the street into the field of dreams. Did you ever imagine things like that when you were a child? You know, I had some rough times in that neighborhood. And I had more than one dog bite. But I'll tell you, that imagination, that story, and playing those pickup football games with my friends, they were a highlight of my childhood. Now, whether um, you were a football star or a sports star, maybe you were a movie star, um, it's her story to tell, but, I, but Carrie, was, she was a music star. She was a, a singing sensation. I, it was Olivia Newton-John, right? Yes! And she would stand on the stairs in her home, and, and she would sing to the delight of the adoring crowds, right? Maybe, maybe you were a teacher, and you would play school. Maybe you were an astronaut, and you'd pretend to, to, to reach the stars. Maybe you were a soldier, Whatever the case is, I I bet you have your own stories when you were a child where you would imagine the world a certain way and you would write the script and write the story and of course you were always the star, right? But then as you got older, things began to change. It it wasn't that you lost your dreams and you lost your hopes and and you lost your imagination. It wasn't that sometimes you, you, you might see and imagine your life as being something different. But as you age, something changes. And I remember that I remember the very day it changed in my life. 
I got a phone call. And on the phone call, I was told that my father had terminal cancer. I was in my early 20s, and he was only 55. Everything changed that day. And my life has never been the same since. I remember after my father died, shortly after he had died, my stepmother said something, and I'll never forget what she said. She said, this isn't how this story was supposed to end. Our story, your dad's story and my story, we were supposed to grow old together in that story. We were supposed to experience the bulk of our lives together. This isn't how our story was supposed to end. And now I don't know what kind of story this is. I don't know how it's going to end. Boy, when she said that, it really hit for me as well. Because everything had changed for me in that moment. You know, as we grow older, we begin to realize that while we have some control over our stories, while there are some things that we can do to determine the outcome, the truth is we really don't know what's going to happen, right? We, we can't skip to the end of the book. We can't fast forward to the end of the DVD or the DVR program. We don't know what's going to happen when the page turns. We can only imagine. Sometimes the story of our life, doesn't it feel like it's going by really fast? Sometimes doesn't the story of your life feel like it's going so painfully slow that tomorrow's never going to come? Sometimes I bet your story feels like an adventure. And maybe your life story and adventure has taken you around the world where you've seen some remarkable things. Maybe there have been moments where your life story was a great comedy and you laughed and you enjoyed things and you smiled from ear to ear. Maybe at one point your life was a romance story and maybe it still is. But maybe the story of your life has been a drama once or twice. And maybe it's been a tragedy. The truth is, our stories unfold in a way that we can't always control and we don't know what's going to happen and sometimes we just wonder, what's going on here? Are you familiar with um, The Lord of the Rings? Tolkien's uh, great, I mean, talk about an adventure. It's one of the greatest adventures that's ever been told. And, and kind of at the heart of that story, in, in, in the two towers, there's this scene that takes place that, that's just, it's so great. Um, Frodo Baggins and Samwise Gamgee, they're, they're the hobbits, right? And, and they found themselves in the midst of this incredible journey that they could have never pictured for, them, for themselves. They're, they're away from the Shire for the first time, and, and they're experiencing something that's overwhelmingly frightening and dangerous and worrisome, and they have no idea what's going to go on. They're, they're just scared out of their minds. And in the, in the midst of that moment, Samwise, he says something to Frodo that I just love. It's kind of a statement, but it's also a question. He says, I wonder what kind of tale we found ourselves in. I wonder what kind of tale we found ourselves in. They knew they were in this big, huge story, this story that was so much bigger than them, this story that they couldn't control, this story that had consumed everything they knew about life. They knew they were in the midst of that story, but they didn't yet know what kind of story it was. Was it a comedy? Was it a drama? Was it an adventure? Was it a tragedy? They didn't know. And they certainly didn't know how the story was going to end. I've never used that exact phrase. I wonder what kind of tale I've found myself in. But more than once since I got that phone call, I've wondered, what's going on in this story of mine? How's it going to unfold 
Are things going to be okay? What's going to happen? I bet you've been there before as well. Or you've just wondered, what kind of story am I in? What we're going to talk about over the next several weeks is that as a people of faith, we're part of a great, big, amazing story. A story that began with those words that I shared with you a moment ago. A story that is stretched up until this time. And a story that's going to stretch throughout all eternity. It is a story filled with hope and promise. It is a drama. It is an adventure. It is a love story. It is a comedy. It is also a tragedy. But on Easter Sunday, we are going to celebrate the greatest story that has ever been told And in between now and then, we're going to unpack God's story in a way that I think is going to help you connect your story to a meaning deeper than you might have imagined. Um, There's this uh, guy named uh, G.K. Chesterton, and he is a writer and a thinker, was a writer and a thinker. Um, And he was writing this book, and as he was writing this book, he was thinking about life. And this is what he said about life. He said, I always felt life first as a story. And if there is a story, there is a storyteller. Now, what Chesterton was talking about, he wrote, this, he wrote this quote in a book called Orthodoxy. He was a Christian person. And when, when Chesterton talked about a storyteller, he was talking about God. That, that we're in the midst of a story, and life is a story, but the storyteller is God. And, and I love this image, and I think this image is kind of tweaking, because I think sometimes when we're going through our lives, we understand the storyteller to be us. We see our life and the world around us in a way that places us at the center of everything. We are the star of the show. And when we place ourselves at the center of the story and we begin to believe that we are the star of the story, we sometimes treat others as though they're the supporting actors in our story. And here's the thing about that. While we're walking around pretending to be the star of the story, so is everybody else we think who's supposed to be supporting actors, right? So while they're supporting actors in our story, guess what we are in their story? Supporting actors, right? And and sometimes that bumps up against us in a weird way because they're not living into our story the way we need them to live into our story. And here's here's the real big deal. It's not just about other people, is it? Sometimes we think God is a part of our story, right? Not the other way around. Think about it this way. Sometimes we often think of God as being a part of our story, but the greater reality is that we are a part of God's story. Do you see the, see the difference here? And it's an important difference. It's just a slight difference, but oh, it's so very, very important. I think sometimes this is the way we kind of live through our life is is God's a part of our story. And whenever we need God to be a part of our story, we kind of pull God into center stage from off in the wings. As long as everything's going okay, we're good with God being in the wings, right? With God waiting off stage. But then as soon as our story takes a turn that we don't like and we want corrected, we want God to come out from the side of the stage to stand center stage and to correct the drama, to make it right, right? I mean, think about the language that we use. Jesus died for my sins. You know what? He did. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're forgiven by the love and grace of Jesus Christ. No question about that. But, but sometimes when we use that kind of language, we begin to kind of assume that Jesus came so that our story would have a happy ending, right? Like that's the way he came. He came and died so that when I die, I'm going to go to heaven and everything's going to be okay. This is all about my story ending well. But here's the thing. While all of that is true, Jesus didn't come to finish your story. Jesus came to finish God's story. See, we're we're a part of God's story. God's the storyteller. 
everything that has happened, everything that is happening, everything that will happen. This is a part of God's great story. And here we are smack dab in the middle of it. Sometimes we wonder just how this story is going to end. Now, as we're going to discover over the next few weeks, when we read Scripture, we find story after story after story of amazing events and amazing people. And sometimes, even when we read the Bible, we think that the story is about Abraham and Sarah, or we think that the story is, is about Isaac, or it's about, or it's, uh, or it's about um, uh, uh, Mary and Joseph, or it's about Paul, or one of the other disciples, or Lydia. And, and, we, and we read the story, and we think it's telling us something about them, and to some degree it is. But the truth is, is that every story in Scripture is telling us something about God. Because it's God's story that we're reading, and they're just a part of that. And when we read God's story in that way, I think we begin to, to see how it all fits together in a way that's bigger than us. Let me give you an example. You know the story of the Exodus, right? We talk about this story a lot. So the Exodus begins with the people of Israel in slavery in Egypt, right? All of them are there. All of them are enslaved. And, and God calls Moses, and Moses convinces the people, hey, we're going to leave slavery, and we're going to go to this place that God tells us is flowing with milk and honey, a promised land that will be our land, that we can inherit and have forever. It will be our home, our place. And so Moses is over here. Moses convinces everybody. And everybody says, yeah, let's go. Because we want to get to the promised land. And so they leave and they escape. And remember what happens after they escape. They don't go straight to the promised land. They go to the wilderness. Not for a day. For 40 years. Right? And you remember, out of all those original people who left slavery and were going to the promised land, do you remember how many people actually made it? Two. Two. So you know what that means for every single other person who left slavery because they wanted to go to the promised land. Guess where their story ended? In the wilderness. They died in the wilderness. They never got there. And if it was their story that we were telling, their individual story. It would feel like a tragedy because all of those people died in the wilderness. They never even reached their goal because their story ended in the wilderness. But you know what happened in God's story? The people of Israel made it to the promised land. And while the people who left Israel to get to the promised land may not have been the ones who got there, it was their descendants who got there. The people got there. God delivered God's people to the promised land. The story isn't about the people who died in the wilderness. The story, God's story, is that in the end they got there and they made it. And the reason that that's a celebratory story is because in God's story, the story is bigger than any one person. God's story is is about an ultimate ending and a people. This is what I know about life, is that sometimes, sometimes we're in the wilderness. And sometimes we get to the other side of the wilderness, right? But sometimes, you know what happens? We don't. Sometimes our story ends in the wilderness. Sometimes we die before we ever get there. We ever get to that place where we thought our story was going to end. Sometimes it gets cut short and we get stuck in the wilderness and we wonder, is this all there was? Well, if it's just our story, it is. But friends, it's not just our story. You see, you're a part of God's story. And here's the thing about God's story. In God's story... No one gets left in the wilderness. 
in God's story, we find a light that overcomes darkness. We find a life that overcomes death. We find a hope that overcomes every single burden and challenge. We find that in the end, we are raised up to the resurrected Christ into a promised land that is ours to behold. And while we may not have made it to the earthly promised land that we thought we would live into, by God, we are not left in the wilderness even if we die there. Because you see, it isn't just my story. It's God's story. And we are just a little bitty sliver in the midst of God. God's story. And we're having our story because of all the people before us who have brought us this far. And now it's our turn to experience God's story in real time. I know that sometimes we think, I don't want to be just a supporting actor. I want everything to center around me. But, but let me tell you, even though you're a supporting actor, you matter. You matter deeply to God and you matter deeply to God's story that's to be told here on earth. Like I said, we're going to be unpacking this over the next few weeks and and I think it's going to touch us in a way that's going to move us closer to understanding what it means to be a part of this great tale. It's a tale of good news. And on Easter Sunday, you know what we're going to share together? Is that this story isn't just about escaping slavery and getting into the promised land. It's about escaping tombs and moving into life. It's the greatest story that's ever been told. It's our story because it's God's story. And we've been made in God's image. Amen.